the survey, so now I can, can also see my screen. Yeah, let me quickly fly through the um, agenda that we have for this webinar. So first of all, I will give a very quick introduction of about Dimension. So what we do, where we come from. Then uh, I will hand over to uh, my colleague Hans um, uh, from AOS, who will speak about SLS uh, with AOS, process materials, applications, etc. Then we will head to the main topic of today's webinar, Vaporfuse, why green and industrial? We will show you eight tests that we performed with vaporfused parts. And then we will, of course, also um, highlight some fields of application where we think where we think vaporfuse surfacing could be of interest. And then, of course, very important how we could all get started. So how, how about um, yeah, starting starting the new process? And in the end, we will of course be there for you um, in the QA session with, with our experts, myself and Hans. Okay, yeah, now. So yeah, a few words to myself until I hand over to my colleagues. So my name is Maximilian Kraus. Um, I'm working in the sales and business development team at Dimension. Um, my experience is about four plus years in 3D printing. Everything I know about additive manufacturing or 3D printing, um, I know from my time at Dimension. And uh, during my, my four plus years of experience, I gained experience from automotive to consumer goods, aerospace. Um, so every, everywhere where we can find 3D printing, basically, I gained some some experience, and yeah, I would like now like to to take the chance and hand over to Hans to introduce himself, please. Thank you, Max. So my name is Hans. Uh, I've been with EOS and the additive manufacturing industry for the last five years in total. Um, I'm working within the business development team, taking care of our strategic alliances, and um, that's why I have a very close relationship also uh, with Dimension. And um, I'm happy to, to um, give you some, some words and some insights on, on what we do and uh, uh, for what we do it. Perfect. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, yeah, then finally, hand over to Alena. Um, please, if you would like to introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Alena, head of R&D here at Dimension. I started to work in 3D printing right after my PhD in chemistry. And during my time here at Dimension, I was, among others, responsible for the development of a vapor fuse surfacing process. And I'm very happy to be here for you at the end of this webinar to ask, uh, to answer all your questions. Perfect. So we have all on board. Um, yeah, let's let's start. As I as I said, just a few very quick words about Dimension for those of you who, who don't know us yet. So. We were founded in 2015, um, and since since day one, everything is is all around turning 3D printed raw parts into high value products. We call ourselves the Die Mannschaft. Maybe some of you um, get get the point of this one. So we are a team of young entrepreneurs um, with all this goal, just uh, revolutionizing the the way of, of manufacturing. We are headquartered in Munich, um, and as we speak, we are moving in into our headquarters for the North American market, which is in Austin. And as of today, we have around about 60 to 70 people. What are we offering as of today? So this is uh, what we call the print to products platform. So that's a snapshot, snapshot of, of all the machines that we are uh, offering to the market um, as of today. Covers all steps from cleaning parts. Um, we have two different surfacing steps, either mechanical or um, chemical with the power fuse S, which is the main topic for today's webinar. And then in the end, um, it, it's all about the deep dye coloring in the DMC. Let me quickly give you a brief brief um, overview of how these uh, workflow steps could, could, could look like. So um, if we talk powder-based, of course, a mandatory step is always cleaning the parts. So this, therefore, we are offering the PowerShot C machine. Um, it's an automated blasting system that removes powder, um, damage preventive and efficiently. And then you decide for the, make the, the surfacing step that, that your application requires. So you could either choose um, a mechanical step, uh, which is polyshot surfacing step happening in the PowerShot S, or you can choose um, the vapor fuse surfacing step in the power fuse F if, as if you require a fully sealed and cleanable washable surface. In the end, the parts could meet each other again in the DM60 for the deep dye coloring process. Of course, depending on the te technology you're using and the final application, these sequence could alter a bit, but that's the general workflow overview. Yeah, our main focus definitely lies in, in the powder bed uh, technologies, um, such as the EOS machines, for example, offering the SLS technology. We gain experience with different PA12 materials, um, PA11, if we talk about the hard polymers, but also on the flexible side, we, we gain some experience with the TPU materials, which is 
very often used in the in the uh, in the uh, fashion industry or also in the medical sector. Um, of course, uh, we can also handle parts um, coming out of machines um, from the um, MJF or HSS sector. Again, PA11 and PA12 materials in the majority, but also TPUs. And then, of course, um, during during the last uh, couple of months, where we introduced the, the chemical smoothing or chemical polishing machine uh, power fuse S, we realized and also our customers realized that it's it's now also possible to handle um, FDM parts. And if we look at the SLA DLP, whatsoever you would call it um, side of it, like carbon, we can also handle these parts in the DM60. So all in all, it is it I think it's it's important to understand that we try to offer a platform that that covers as many as possible um, different printing technologies and materials that are popular on the market. Yeah, so now I would like to hand over to Hans to give you some more insights about the SLS technology and uh, also about um, the company behind it, EOS. Thank you, Max, and uh, thanks again for, for having me. It's a pleasure to provide you with some, some more insights on what we do and who we are. So I will keep it short that the main focus will stay within the web of use, but just a few sentences on EOS. So EOS is a family owned company with a headquarter quite close to the Dimension headquarter location. So that's not the only reason uh, why we have a very close relationship, of course. And over the last 30 years, uh, we have installed more than 3,500 systems in roughly 70 countries, which secures ourselves uh, a very unique position in the field of industrial 3D printing. In total, more than 1,300 employees and 75 distribution partners are continuously working on our customer success from offices in round about 65 countries. So what are we doing? We are a solution provider in polymer and metal industrial 3D printing. So one part of the solution is of course the hardware, which you can see on, on this slide. So on the bottom of the page, there, is, uh, there are the polymer systems and on the, on, uh, sorry, on the top of the page, there are the polymer systems and on the bottom, there are the, the metal systems. And those systems uh, are different um, because of, uh, they're addressing different customer needs in terms of size, speed, and degree of automation. So all of the systems are based on laser sintering technology and uh, the core know-how mainly lies uh, within the process and to be more precise uh, in the interaction between the laser and the powder. So the general process for the metal and polymer systems are quite similar. Um, and due to the fact that we look at the polymer workflow today, I brought an illustration of the SLS process for polymer materials. So how does it work? Um, first, you start with a CAD model from the part you would like to print, then you have to slice uh, the part into layers or cross sections of the part, which are then sent to the printer. The powder is uniformly applied on the building plat platform by using the recoder. A heating lamp will heat up the polymer to pre-warm the powder and reduce the needed uh, laser energy. Then a CO2 laser beam melts the powder and solidifies the material um, into the, the defined shape, so into the cross section of the part. After this, the building platform is lowered by the thickness of one layer. The process repeats layer by layer until all the layers of the piece has, pieces have been generated. Exactly. So the unmelted powder can then be removed and reused following a very simple sieving process. And the part itself can be brought into the post-processing work, post workflow. And this is, of course, uh, the area where the dimension magic happens. Besides our systems, uh, the solution includes material, software, and service and consulting. For example, we do have uh, around about 100 consultants and applications engineers, which are supporting our customer throughout their AM development cycle. With having a look at the material part of the solution, um, we offer an extremely wide range of materials which can be processed on our systems. So more or less all the industrial available uh, materials on the metal side, as well as roughly 40 to 50 uh, different uh, polymer materials. Um, with having a look at the standard materials in our polymer portfolio, um, the largest share is of course for applications which are PA12 and PA11 based with different fillings and specifications. Besides, we do further have some mid and high temp materials as well as other special materials like TPU. With having a look at the vapor fuse processability, we currently do have a stable process for the PA2200 as well as PA11 and the TPU material. 
first promising results uh, could have been achieved for a set of further materials, which you can, which are indicated on, on, on this slide. So what can we do with all of this? So our customers mainly operate in four different verticals, namely air and space enablement, industry and production, humaneering, as well as advanced mobility. In all of this industry, we have uh, extremely exciting applications on both metal and polymer side. And with the vapor fuse technology, um, there will be potential to enhance existing applications as well as enable new AML applications. So just let us think about um, in the automotive industry when it comes to um, new look, look and feel features as well as uh, fluid and gas transportation um, or in the human engineering area to achieve uh, next level skin tolerances. And last but not least, of course, in the industry and uh, production area, when you think about food and beverage certification of grippers. So there's a wide range of different applications where we think, and we already have customers using vaporfuse technology, um, where, where we can enable uh, new applications and identify uh, some, 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 uh, uh, um, some enhancing criteria and some, some new ways of, of uh, defining new areas uh, where existing applications can move in. So the potential is manifold. And uh, with this, I will hand over to Max. Thank you very much, Hans, for this very easy to understand introduction of EOS and also the SLS technology. Um, so I will now come directly to the point and keep it as, as compact as possible. So let's start with Vaporfuse. Why is it an, a green and industrial solution? So what we can see here is actually a, a snapshot of the front of the power fuse S. You can already see the loading, the loading tray. Some SLS parts are about uh, to being um, feeded into the machine, into the process chamber. And to give you a little more insights on that, I would like to share a short video with you. I hope you can all see it. So this is a quick animation of, of the vapor fuse process in general, so the machine um, is operated with these loading trays. You have to hang up the parts. We can see PA2200 parts in this animation. That's the raw part. Now we can see the, the vapor is reacting with the, with the surface of the part, smoothing it with an iterative process so that in the end we have a sealed, completely sealed surface where its peaks and valleys are leveled out. And Besides this, we also end up with a glossy surface that is still keeping the details. And here we have the comparison between the raw and the finished part, also with the dyed part. So you can, of course, also color the parts after the vapor fuse process. That's, that's no problem at all. Yeah, just a very quick, quick animation um, of, of the power fuse, um, how the process in general works. So it's, it's a very, very easy to operate process. So let me let me quickly give you some background uh, to the machine and uh, why it's industrial and a green solution. So in the end, all, all what we do at Dimension is always always focusing on 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 key words like industrialization and sustainability. Um, but in the end, industrialization can only happen if if sustainability and and industrialization uh, go hand in hand. And this is exactly where the power of use has the biggest value, I would say, because this machine really embodies the principle of this economic sustainability values. So let's quickly jump to the architecture of, of this machine. So of course, um, another buzzword that is around for quite a long time now is the industry 4.0 readiness. What does that mean for this machine? Um, the PowerFuse S has an automatic loading concept, so it can basically run 24 seven. All you have to do is to, to yeah, prepare the loading trace and then the machine um, Will will be will be ready for 24/7 operation. You can you can predefine um, define parameter sets per basket and ha have the machine running 24/7. In the full production capacity, you have unbeatable costs as you do not need anyone that is um, monitoring the machine or that is operating the system. It it all happens automatically. The the whole process, of course, monitored. Um, we have connect connectivity features. Um, um, using Siemens control units. That is uh, very important for the in factory of the future. On the left-hand side, we can see um, a snapshot how this, this could look. And then as I already um, said, we have validated programs for the most common materials that are um, popular on the market. And our R&D team together with our customers is uh, continuously working on having new parameter sets for uh, new materials 
that are uh, available right now or in the future. Yeah, what does this machine besides makes make green? So um, of course, our biggest goal is to transform the reputation of chemical smoothing because um, this is very often connected to harsh chemicals and uh, toxic waste. So our, our goal was to develop a solution that is eco-friendly um, and um, this is only possible with the solvent um, that, that we use, which is also eco-friendly and even approved for food and packaging uh, by the EU. Uh, the solvent we use is not categorized under a CMR um, substance. Um, CMR stands for carcinogenic, mutagenic, and reprotoxic. And the solvent is, it can also be found in, in cosmetics. It runs in a closed loop. So we have an integrated recovery system uh, in, in the machine. Um, so there is no waste generated at all. So none of your employees have to refill or um, handle waste of solvents. Um, it's a, it's a contact-free process and it fulfills all the health and safety standards. So everything um, that's, that is important to operate the system is covered in the machine. Um, it's, it's not dangerous to operate the system. Everything is, is inside, so it can be operated in any facility around the globe. What we can be really proud of is um, this, this one here. This one is about the Green Deal, so the big mission for Europe. Um, Europe wants to be the first a continent that is climate neutral by 2050. And um, Dimension definitely supports this mission here. And we are very proud and fortunate that we have been selected as one of the very first companies that is um, granted by the European Innovation Council for the Horizon 2020 project. And um, we applied with the whole concept around the power of UCS. And in July this year, we were granted with that uh, green deal. Um, and we are very happy uh, that um, the community understands what this machine can can have an impact in the future. Here we see a lot of different um, beautiful looking parts, colorful, nice surfaces whatsoever. But in the end, of course, we need to improve parts beyond aesthetics. And this is exactly what we are now um, heading over into the um, into the improved properties testings that we performed with vapor fuse. Now let me quickly jump into the first test. This is about the sealed surfaces, not only outside, but also inside. I would like to use this slide to give you a, um, um, yeah, just a brief introduction how these, how these eight following tests have been performed. So we always used the SLS technology. Uh, we always used a PA2200, so the PA12 from EOS. On the left hand side, you will always see a part which has been untreated, so by untreated I mean not vapor fused, but sometimes colored to make it more visible. And on the right hand side, you will always see a part that has been treated with a vapor fused surfacing technology. What we used for this test is a, yeah, a, a S-curved, I call it an S-curved pipe um, that, is, that, that we cut in half right after the vapor fuse surfacing process. I will show you how this looked like, so very quick animation. Uh, so that you can see that it's um, the same part. And then right afterwards, we would put water through the pipe and we will now get a, a close up um, how the water behaves once running through this pipe. And on the left hand side, we can clearly see that the water is trapped all in between the pores. And on the right hand side, it's, it's basically a very, I would say an injection molded looking like pipe where almost none of the water is still being trapped. So. Um, this, of course, has to do with the reduced RA values um, that we managed to achieve with the vapor fuse surfacing process. And um, the roughness could be reduced by 73%. So what are the results from this test? Um, we, have, we ended up with sealed surfaces inside and outside. Uh, the surface roughness was reduced by 73%, and we, have then improved, we had an improved water and airflow. Yeah, before moving to the next one, I would like to say, just as, as you saw the first test, these are no ISO norm tests, right? So we tried to, to, to use tests that are very visible, that just make, make, make sure that everyone is understanding um, what could be the, the benefits of using a vapor fuel surfacing technology. So the next one is about the productive spray painting. Again, same setup as I, as I described before. Uh, what we tried here is uh, we tried to find out if the vapor fuel surfacing has a has a, a, a an impact on the spray painting of parts, as this is still very very often used in the additive manufacturing industry. And in the first step, we just so on the left hand side again a raw part, on the right hand side a vapor fuse one. 
and we applied one layer of spray paint and then a second layer on both parts and as we can see on the right hand side uh, we already achieved um, a level that is that is quite okay that is that looks like injection molded whereas on the left hand side a lot of spray paint is absorbed by the um, bigger surface area that the raw part still has so we applied even more layers right so here are we we are at the at the third layer with the fourth layer the fifth and even the sixth layer after six layers we thought okay this this is a this is a result that is comparable um, but of course it, it took some more time so let's have a look at the results of course um, with a, with a with a reduced surface area um, we and, and the reduced amount of material that we needed we could we, we were able to reduce the material and the time to a third so vapor fuse could replace steps that might have to be done when spray painting additive manufactured parts like spray priming for example and all in all um, it, it ends up with a more productive spray painting the next one is about the improved air tightness so here we used um, we use different wall thicknesses. Um, we, we created a, a, little, a little balloon, let's say, and we, we applied some compressed air and put it under water to make it more visible. So on, on, on this slide, you can see um, a part which has a wall thickness of 0.45 millimeters. The pressure, pressure is constantly at four bar. On the left-hand side, we can see bubbles escaping the material. On the right-hand side, the vapor fuse one, there are no bubbles coming out of the material. We did the same test with a different wall thickness. Now it's 0.5 millimeters of wall thickness. Um, again, on the left-hand side, we can see bubbles escaping um, out, of the, out of the balloon. And on the right-hand side, it is, it, is, um, it is already watertight or pressure tight. And then what we also tested, um, just to make sure that we exactly understand the limits here, from a wall thickness of 0.6 millimeters, we um, do not see any bubbles escaping out of the out of the raw part. So um, yeah, this shows that the SLS printed uh, parts, um, the PA2200 parts are already pressure tight with a wall thickness of, of 0.6 millimeters. No difference here. But still, of course, um, yeah, if you, if, you, if you have to improve uh, air tightness just by adding, adding uh, or just by using a thicker wall, this will end up with, um, with having, you have to use more material. So um, with a vapor fuse, in combination with a small wall thickness, you end up with improved air tightness, even for a wall thickness of 0.45 or 0.5. And um, this enables, of course, new designs because you need less material and have less weight. There might be some applications where this could have a big impact. The next one is about the reduced friction. This one is, of course, highly um, focusing on the RA values. So what we had here is uh, kind of an inclined plane um, where we put on these parts. So on the left-hand side, again, it's just colored, but no vapor fuse surfacing happening. And on the right-hand side, it's also colored and uh, with a vapor fuse finish. And then um, it's, it's very visible that, um, yeah, with the, with the, with the reduced uh, surface roughness, uh, the friction of the parts could be heavily reduced by 40.2%. So this is, of course, because of the smooth surface, uh, we are generating less abrasion and we have no shaving effect. Just think of applications where you do not want to have any shaving at all, right? So um, in, the, in, the, in the bicycle sector, for example, if you think of, of, of settles, for example. The next one, number five, is about the improved stability. Um, so same setup here as well. So we used a very, a very um, easy design. So we had a plate with some pins on it. Um, on the left-hand side, um, again, the parts have not been vapor fused. Uh, we used a a metal bar that we slid over the parts and forced them to bend. We did it back and forth to make sure that there was even more energy happening to the pins. Um, so you can see that it's yeah quite an effort to go through these PA2200 parts. Yeah, and the result was that on the left-hand side, so where no vapor fuse surfacing was applied to the parts, uh, six pins broke. Whereas on the right hand side, of course, they are heavily deformed, but none of the pins broke. So the results uh, we have, we, we ended up with an improved flexibility. We have a reduced embrittlement and of course an improved part stability by using the vapor fuse surfacing technology. Next one is about bacteria protection, especially during times uh, that we are facing at the moment. This one is, is, is of, of high importance. 
Um, so what we what we did here is we had two basically two tensile rods, one raw a raw one and a and a vapor fused surface one, and then we 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 quick quickly tapped it onto a petri petri plate um, growing platform let's say. So um, here you can see the status from our zero. And uh, after 24 hours, we realized that there was already some bacteria growth in the, in the on the left hand side. Um, it's it's getting even more after 32 hours, and uh, after 36 hours, there were plenty of bacteria growing on the left hand side. So on the on the petri plate where uh, the untreated part has been has been um, in contact with. On the right hand side, this is only condensed water, but we haven't seen any bacteria grows on the right-hand side. Yeah, after 40 hours, we ended the test and we can see a lot of bacteria growth here on, on, on the left-hand side. Yeah, what are the results for this one? So the vapor fuse surfacing could protect um, against bacteria, bacteria growth um, and these surfaces are easier to wipe and disinfect. So if you think of medical applications or in the hospitals where you have, have um, yeah, things that need to be cleaned very quickly after they have been used, for example, um, that could be a very, very great field of application here in the future with the vapor fuse. Test number seven is about the washable surfaces for the food and medical application again. So here we had a yeah, Petri style uh, plate again, um, and we put some ketchup on it. Again, on the left hand side, we see the non vapor fuse surface, and on the right hand side, we see a chemically polished one. And we just tried to wipe off the ketchup and you can al already see it that there is a difference but if we if we look under the microscope we can still see that there is some of the ketchup trapped in the raw material whereas on the sealed surface there is no more residue from from ketchup visible so again um the the vapor fuse surface they are this wash washable surfaces that which are easy to clean we have no residues of ketchup on the part and um, due to the solvent is certified for food contact according to the European regulation 10 2011, there are many applications in this industry that could be possible in the future by using um, PA2200, for example, in combination with the vapor fuse surfacing technology. The eighth test and the last test was about um, washable surfaces again. This time we, we, um, we used oil and other liquids that we tested. So we had a very basic um, funnel that we used and the procedure had five steps. So the first step was, was about to apply oil uh, onto these funnels and you can already see it on the left hand side again, it's raw but colored just to make it more visible. On the right hand side, it was colored and in addition vapor fused. The second step was then to apply oil remover and um, then we, we, we followed uh, the, the guideline on, on the oil remover systems in the back. So uh, after, after 15 minutes, we, we, wiped, we wiped the part. And you can already see that there is a lot of residue in between the, the layers of the part and the pores. Then we applied some water. And 15 minutes after the rinsing, we could still see that there is a lot of residues of oil remover um, which is a harsh, a very harsh chemical. Um, um, so there are so there are still residues visible, whereas on the right hand side, we basically have the same surface that we had before the test. Yeah, and if we look, if we had a close, if we have a closer look on the microscope, we can we can even emphasize this. So there is a lot of different um, things trapped between between the layers and the raw parts, and on the right hand side, it's it's almost a very clear clear surface. Yeah, so again, the results. So we, we ended up with a sealed surface, which is very easy to clean. Uh, it's resistant to chemicals like this oil remover, for example, and we do not see any residues of chemicals on the part itself. Yeah, so very quickly, some these, these have been the eight tests that, that we performed. Um, again, no ISO certified tests, but we tried to make it as, as visible as possible, as simple as possible to understand. Uh, very pragmatic, I would say. And stay tuned and make sure that you that you are following us on the social media um, channels that we have, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you use, because we will be sharing some more insights on these tests and we will um, also maybe showing some more tests in the future. So make sure that you stay tuned here. And 
if you would like to get more into the ISO certification testings that we perform, then I can definitely recommend the state of state of the art surfacing white paper where we compare the chemical vapor fuse surfacing and the mechanical polyshot surfacing. Uh, we have a very detailed uh, test on proper properties and of course also the fields of application. You can you can get this by by direct request from me or my colleagues or download it on our on our website. I can definitely recommend that. Yeah, let's now move to the fields of application that we have with the vapor fuse surfacing technology. Of course, these these are the verticals that um, we, as I mentioned, define. So there might be some more. You can, but, but some, maybe you can combine a few of these. But these are the fields of application that we are at the moment, or our customers are working at. And um, so it's it's all from industrial to automotive, consumer eyewear, for example, medical, food and beverage, and aerospace. I will now highlight three of them to give you more insights on on what might be possible in the future here. So if we look at the consumer applications, we, we can think of eyewear, for example, where I do see a very big benefit is, um, is in replacing tumbling processes, for example, or fiber polishing processes, as those take a lot of time. So the vapor fuse could have a big impact on that. Um, sports helmets, bicycle seats, as, we, as, I, as I just explained, so everything where, where no friction um, is needed, everything that needs to be gentle, uh, where no bacteria growth uh, has to happen, um, all there. Um, this has, is a good fit because we have very useful properties here. So the smooth and sealed surfaces, the reduced friction, it's washable, and it's 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 improved stability that it's uh, that it's delivering to parts. If we look look at the medical sector, uh, here we can we can of course speak about orthotics and prothesis, um, about protective masks that are very popular nowadays. Unfortunately, um, laboratory and test equipment that needs to be cleaned, centrifuges, for example. Again, um, all possible because we have sealed surfaces that are also washable, where no bacteria can grow, um, where we have reduced friction, um, so that it's gentle to skin and that is biocompatible, especially with the EOS PA2200 material. The last one that I would like to highlight is the food and beverage industry, um, because I, I think that this is a very interesting field of application as many different fluids, liquids, um, or different materials have to be handled in different packaging. So that's a very special one for additive manufacturing. So we, we, we speak of pick and place, but also robotics, covers and pipes that are um, applying um, different medias. What are the useful properties in here? Again, sealed and washable surfaces, um, no bacteria growth, so bacteria protection, the improved water flow or media flow and um, uh, for since a couple of months, we are also able to share a declaration of non-migration for food contact um, for the EOS PA2200 material. Yeah, so a lot of information right now about tests, results, and also fields of application. I hope that um, at least some of you um, yeah, found themselves in there um, and maybe have some ideas on how to get in, get in touch with us and how to get started. Um, so the one way to, to get started would be the easy and free benchmarking service that we are offering. Um, so you can simply reach out to us and have a conversation about your product, your application, the desired finish, and uh, we will then perform a benchmark free of charge. Um, you will get a report um, from our R&D team. So you will get exactly all the details that you require to understand what has been done to your parts and what might be the next steps. And then what I'm really proud of, of course, is to share this one. Um, it's the uh, Dimension Partner Platform. So here we can find the leading, the leading, all the leading players in the industry that are um, offering Dimension quality all around the globe. So, and uh, one logo that is very prominent here, of course, is EOS. Um, so we are very, very happy that EOS is supporting us uh, all over the globe um, with their broad uh, network of, of resellers, uh, partners, customers. So. That's something that we can really be proud of. And um, yeah, so this really helps to, to make sure that um, yeah, additive manufacturing can start, get to the next, next level. So yeah, that's it basically. Um, I hope it was kind of um, informative for you and you learned um, more about uh, the vapor fuel surfacing technology, how it could be beneficial for you. Um, here, here you can see the business cards of uh, Hans and myself feel free to reach out whenever you think it makes sense. We are looking forward to emails, phone calls, meetings, whatsoever. And yeah, thank you very much.